today is a slightly different video and I guess I feel a little bit <laughs> awkward just sat down chatting to a camera um, but it's minus seven in the UK today and I know that's not cold for a lot of places in the world but we're not used to it being that chilly so I didn't fancy sitting outside to do, <laughs> to do this video so welcome to my home we're gonna go through my endurance riding story and kind of how i got into horses how i got into endurance riding and and the horses that i've had along the way it's been requested a couple of times and i guess it would be really good for you guys to have a little bit of background of um how i've got to where i am now so i started riding in 1993 when i was two years old um, i was super lucky to grow up in the countryside and my first pony um, was a Shetland piebald, so he's black and white, called Hamish. And he was 32 inches tall, or short. Um, and I started out kind of doing shows on the lead drain, and mum took me to hunt rides on the lead drain, and, and social rides and things like that. Where I grew up is in the middle of nowhere, lots and lots of countryside to ride in, loads of mountains. So I guess it was a natural progression to get into endurance, but... Um, even though I did hunt rides and, and social rides, I didn't do my first endurance ride on Hamish. The next pony I had was Twinkle and she was 30, 36 or 38 inches tall. Not particularly tall anyway, she was a chestnut Shetland. Um, and apparently I told my mum that there was no way I could ride her because she was too big. <laughs> those, those few inches matter apparently. Um, I kind of did the same on her but I started doing more off the lead rein. I remember kind of being a bit more independent with her and being able to tack up and things like that. I must have been probably maybe three, four, five maximum um, on her. Um, did lots of Gymkhana games, started Pony Club. Um, I loved going to Pony Club camp and, and earning all the badges and things. Um, and then, because, you know, I got taller, not significantly taller, I'm only five foot two now. Um, so I kind of grew out of Twinkle and I had Amigo who was a 11 hand section A Welsh mountain pony. He was kind of fresh from the sales and just backed. He was a youngster, I think he was three or four, um, and he was a complete surprise. So my dad bought him at the sales, bought him home. And I don't think my mum knew either. Um, it's fair to say that this pony taught me how to stay on. And I don't think a day went by where I probably didn't fall off. <laughs> because <laughs> he, he was feisty. I guess this is kind of where my proper, proper riding career started. I had lots of lessons on him. Um, I'd go out hacking by myself and we had two neighbours, a mile apart each, but two neighbours that had similar children to us, similar age to us, who also had horses. And that was kind of the age where we, we started kind of hacking out together and making our own kind of fun Gymkhana days and stuff like that. So Amigo was great fun. I loved like playing with him out in the field because he, he could play, kind of play football with me and hide and seek and things like that. And he was like, I think where my kind of love and passion for horses really, really kind of rooted itself. Um, being in the middle of nowhere, you couldn't really just walk to the park to see a friend. So he was my best friend and who I literally played with all day. Amigo was the pony that I did my first like proper endurance ride and that was in 2000. Um, and he, my first ever ride, he was on the front cover of Endurance magazine and it was the start of my love of endurance and he, he's literally, so Welsh mountain ponies are like little miniature Arabs and oh my gosh, he could move. So we would be out and about, I would ride with my mum, who was on a um, Irish cob called Harvey, and my dad, who was on an Irish, not an Irish, a Welsh cob called Ellen. Um, and we'd all ride together, um, doing about the 40Ks and stuff. And it really like, I just, this is where I started to love endurance because even though he was only 11 hands, he had the biggest extended trot you've ever seen for something so small and he was so speedy and I loved that kind of we could go and explore and do stuff together and see different places and we traveled around the UK doing kind of lots of different types of ride and it was a really nice kind of family thing because my brother also crewed. So I rode Amigo until about 2003 where unfortunately I grew again. I might even have a picture where I actually look like 
I might need roller skates to ride my pony. Um, he went off to a really lovely home and was doing like pony club and stuff like that. And at the time we saw Domingo, I didn't really have another horse that was like coming up that I could, coming up through the ranks that I could ride. So dad had bought our first ever Arab that came to our yard at home called Gilvach Serena. Um, and she was off the race course. So she's an ex flat racing Arab, um, which meant that Ellen, his Welsh cob was kind of free to, uh, to jump on and ride. So I started riding Ellen and in the season that I started riding her, I think it was 2003, I think it was straight into it um, from Selling Amigo. Literally at the start of the season, my legs didn't pass the saddle flaps and by the end of the season, my legs were like just below. So it was definitely going through a growth spurt. So Ellen was a really, really nice horse. Even though um, she was quite a kind of like well put together cob, she was quite chunky. Um, when she got really fit, she was really good at endurance. Um, she presented really well. I think the native breeds are a little bit harder to, grew, to crew and get the heart rate down, but it really teaches you loads. Um, and I had so much fun with her and it was really, really nice to kind of take over the ride from dad when he progressed onto, onto the Arabs. So I rode Ellen for two seasons. In that time, we had bought Tizzy from Halsden Arabians down in Devon, actually, initially for mum. Um, unfortunately, Tizzy had a horrific field accident. She got chased by one of the other horses um, through the field shelter, jumped over the field shelter wall into a hay rack, degloved her back legs. There was a hole like the size of your fist up inside her thigh. She'd like ripped the skin down her sternum and was a total, total mess. Um, and because we live in the middle of nowhere, the, the closest um, equestrian hospital is like two and a half, three hours away. She'd have never made it down for surgery. Um, and the vets that could come out who were on call, Joe, there's only one of them and it's a big job. So actually my, my dad, who is a doctor, helped the vet and they spent hours and hours and hours working on Tizzy to try and kind of repair the damage and meaning that we wouldn't have to put her down. It was a really, really long road to recovery. Um, it took a long time for that skin to heal and for the wound to close up. I think it was about six months of bandages and changes and stuff. But it was kind of the beginning of us knowing that Tizzy was a tough little cookie. <laughs> so during the time that Tizzy was on box rest, obviously I was still at school and had school holidays and things like that. So I had loads and loads of time to sit in the stable with her. I used to read in the corner, like take her tidbits, take her for some hand grazing and stuff because mum was at work and on call. So I did a lot of kind of like the care for her. Um, and I think we really, really bonded. So in 2005, I kind of took over the ride of Tizzy. Mum, unfortunately, never ever got to do a ride on her. I'm not even sure she rode her out from home. She might have a couple of times before she got injured. Um, I stole her, basically. And it's probably a good thing because she only turned out to be 14 hands. Um, so she was quite diddy. Uh, so I did my first season in 2005 and it was actually the first year that I got selected to go on the Welsh team. So Tizzy and I did the two day 80 kilometer together um, and it was really, really good and I enjoyed it so much to kind of be part of a team. Where I grew up, literally two and a half miles down the road was where the Welsh, um, Welsh team Chef to Keep lived. So. She'd got mum into endurance and, and mum had been on the Welsh team a couple of times and dad had been on the Welsh team with Ellen a couple of times. Um, so I'd been crewing, I'd been in that environment, but it was my first kind of taste of being on a team and, and we won, which was amazing. Um, and it was really nice that it was Tizzy, um, Tizzy's first season. I think that's something that's really nice about endurance. We've got kind of like national championships. It's called the Home International um, and a separate one called the Celtic Challenge. And you need to have a rider from like every single level. So you can literally be a novice in your first year and you can represent your country and you're in this like big team that has someone competing at every distance. Um, and then you've got people that are super experienced in the same team as you doing like the two day 160. And you've also got everyone else's crews to teach your crew and help you out. And it's just, it's such a lovely way of 
of being competitive, but being supported, getting to know your horse and kind of taking the little tidbits from everyone. I, once I started riding Tizzy in 2005, I was getting to the age where you're allowed to start race riding. Um, Tizzy wasn't ready to start race riding, but I was like, literally, clenching, crunching on the bit. What's, what's the term? I really wanted to go. I was raring to go. I really wanted to start. Um, so I, there's a theme here. <laughs> I stole that horse, um, Zarina, who, phenomenal. She was so fast, really good heart rates, really good presentation times to do my first ever race ride at Siren Sester Park. And to this day, many years later, it's still the only racing finish I've ever done. And I don't know if I came second or third, I can't remember now, but I won the racing finish I was in. Um, and it was just, it was so much fun. I had no idea really about tactics or what I was doing. I just rode the first two loops fairly steady, like I would have done if I was in a, in a graded ride. And then <laughs> mum gave me this huge pep talk of like, don't you dare ride this horse into the ground now on the last loop. Joe. I know you're in the top five, don't get competitive. This is your first race, keep you cool, keep your head on. So I came up to the, like the finishing line is really long at the Siren Sister ride. I think it's about half a mile. I don't know. It's very, very long stretch of green grass. Um, so we were coming over the brow of the hill and I had another um, rider next to me and it was a bit of a kind of wow moment for me because she was actually on Team GB at the time and I was like so excited that I was riding in the same race as a Team GB rider. Little did I know what was to come. Um, and I can remember coming over the brow and I was like, right, I'm not going to race her because mum will have my head off. I'm going to just canter her nicely in, pass the vet, get my first race done. And I remember hearing mum go, kick on! And she was like, come on, Beth, race! I was like, oh my gosh, go! Um, and because Darina had been on the flat, boy, did she have a turn of pace and she just went for it and it was so good and she pulled up really nicely and her heart rates were so good and we'd ridden quite slowly so it was no detriment to her but to this day I've never had the opportunity to race again because um, with Tizzy there, I was never with anyone to cross the finish line. So I only did a couple of races on Zarina because Tizzy was kind of getting her qualifications, I've got hair in my mouth, there we go, <laughs> finishing her qualifications and kind of coming up through the ranks. And we did our first race in 2006 um, and she turned out to be pretty good and I had a little bit more idea of kind of being tactical um, and how I should look at races and, and pace and stuff. Um, and we did our first FEI that year as well because the qualifications used to be a little bit different. Unfortunately, we crossed the finish line in first and we got better out of the end lane. And I would hand on my heart say that was probably my fault. Well, not probably, it was definitely my fault. I got a little bit too excited about being in the lead, winning my first FEI ride and probably pushed her a little bit faster than I should have over what was pretty rough terrain. It was the one and only ever 120 kilometre FEI ride that has been run at Red Dragon. It, it, would, it was put on that year and it was never put on again. I think it had quite a high attrition rate. So I apologise for adding to those figures. Um, but what it did teach me is a lot. So it taught me about pacing, it taught me about keeping my head, not just thinking about placings. Um, and actually that even if you fail, even if it's at the end, like the horse doesn't know, Joe, you might as well smile, give them a hug, treat them just the same because they've put all that effort in. And I, it, it's not for nothing, because I, I learned a lot about Tizzy and kind of where she had her dips and how kind of forward she was and how much she loved to go. So I think I learn way more and become a much better rider from the times that I fail than from the times that I do really well. So the next year I did a 120 at the start of the season and I knew that if I got around this 120 I would be qualified for Team GB for the Young Rider team and lo and behold this is when Tizzy started pulling things out of the bag. Um, she qualified and we got selected to go on like the Young Rider development squad to Germany. Um, this was my first trip abroad with the horse, well I guess that's kind of a lie because I did go to Ireland. This is my first trip to kind of Europe abroad with a horse um, and we were part of kind of so they run it a little bit like a championship there were loads of other um, teams from all over Europe there 
and it was such a wonderful experience and one of the things that I was most excited about was getting team kit and that first time that I got team kit was just like it blew my mind I thought I was so cool um it was just it's a really lovely memory again we got around the ride um, I can't even remember what the placing was, it wasn't very fast, I can't remember being very competitive about it um, and I got Vestelli and lame again. Um, however, this is the last time, so the last time Tizzy was vested out lame was in 2007 <laughs> um, that I ever got vested out lame and she never ever got vested out in a vet gate, it was, it was at the end both times. So it was a good experience, we learned that she travels really well. Um, I learnt kind of a lot about the bigger races because in the UK the races are still quite small whereas in Europe the mass starts are much bigger and it was nice to know that Tizzy really does not care about lots of horses around her in a really big mass start. So in 2008 was my first ever ever FEI win and it was it was awesome. Um, I think it was at Dukeries. Um, obviously this was again in the UK at a two star and she just flew like I think the training in 2007 had really accumulated and I'd got a bit more confident about rides and, and riding in Europe made me think a little bit more about the stats of a ride and how other people ride and I took like little tidbits that I'd seen in Germany with me and I really started to feel kind of competitive, like I really wanted to go for it. So yeah, we, we won our first FEI ride then and got our first proper Team GB cap. So not on the development squad, but like proper going to a European Championships. Um, and that was in 2008 and we competed in Spain. We got Team 4th. Um, I can't remember what my individual place was. I think it was 24th or 25th. Um, it was quite a tough race. Um, lots of hills, which we were used to from training in Wales, but it was quite hot. Um, and it was my first real experience of having to ride to team orders and I found that, and I won't lie, I find it still quite difficult. Um, a lot of other countries, they train a lot together and the horses are from kind of the same stables when they're on a squad, whereas all the horses in GB, they're usually trained as individuals. And when we all get together, we've got such different riding plans and techniques and kind of hopes for the race that it's quite difficult to ride together but learning curve it was definitely um, kind of where I realized that sometimes you've got to put what you want aside and then sometimes you also have to stand your ground and go no I believe I want to do it this way and it's all about give and take and, and working as a team surprisingly <laughs> so in 2009 I did my first world championships in Hungary with Tizzy and this is where like I really started to think oh Tizzy's quite good. So I really planned the stats for this ride, I was getting really into um, riding to a plan that was statistically going to give me hopefully a good result. Um, I was aiming kind of to get a top 20 after finishing in, in the top 30 at my last championship. We came 13th, so 13th in a world championship isn't bad. Um, and she just flew around the last loop. Like it was, it was, I think it's one of the fastest 120s we've done. But I remember just thinking, like I paced my ride, I rode my plan, and we got onto the last loop and I was like, well, we're in an okay position. And actually Tizzy felt really good. And I literally just asked her to go and she was like, whoom! And had loads of energy at the finish and things. So after that championship, I kind of thought to myself, like if, if I really tried to go for it, like if I really just kind of, was less cautious and just went for it, how well would we do? So in 2010, I went to the European Championships as an individual. They didn't send a team that year, and I can't remember why. I think maybe there weren't enough qualified or some some team politics, I'm not sure. But we went by ourselves, but we still had a whole um, team management. So we still had the vet, the chef to keep, logistics, barrier. And it actually it was really, really nice. Um, because we could drill, like in the days before, we drilled how we were going to do the vet gates. Everyone was like really focused on getting Tizzy in kind of the best shape and getting her through. And it was just like everyone had like this tunnel vision of we're going to get this horse like a really good placing at this ride because we didn't have to think about anyone else. It's probably one of my favourite championship experiences. I guess that makes me quite selfish, but that's the truth. Um, 
and we had a really, really good time. I had a ride plan, I was really confident in my abilities, um, and I was, I was going for a top three placing. Unfortunately, I got the worst individual placing you can get, fourth. It's like, almost there, not enough, almost would have preferred fifth. <laughs> because <laughs> then you're like, well, there's one person in front of me, I definitely wasn't getting a medal. Um, and I, I rode as well as I possibly could, um, had like tactics in mind, literally from the warm-up, I had tactics um, and I, I knew exactly what I wanted to do on every loop and what I wanted to do in every vet gate. And on the last loop, just before I was going out on the last loop, I was warming up and the team vet, um, she's called Georgina, at the time, she, and still, she's like one of the top FEI, FEI riders in the UK. She was like, you've got this, she looks good. And coming from her, I was like, oh my God, I, I must have this, she, we must look good. Um, and I flew out of that venue with so much self-belief. And Tizzy did that last loop at 25K an hour. And we just, it was literally like she was gliding. It was effortless. We went through crew points, grabbing the slosh bottles. It was just so good. Um, and probably one of my favourite races of all time, but we did get fourth, which I'm still annoyed about now, but not an as annoyed as I am about my next championship. <laughs> I've just realised um, I finished filming my endurance riding story and that it's, it's 41 minutes long, so we're probably going to break it into two. Um, so if this is part one, end of part one and we'll continue the endurance writing story in part two later.